Welcome back, everybody, to another episode here of Just Stolen. Today we're going to be playing some more Higurashi When They Cry Ho, Chapter 1, Onigikushi Hen. Last time, Rena stalked us in her room while we were talking to oishi san on the telephone. Telephone. And now, uh, now it's the next day and we're going to continue. I'm going to hop right in. I'm feeling a lot better from the last two days. And so, yeah, enough rambling. Let's jump right in. I'm super excited. Super excited. Weariness and headache. Not a very nice way to start the day. I like this fucking music, I'll tell you that. Mom, what's wrong? Oh, sorry. <laughs> wow. Why? <laughs> what's wrong? Keiichi, you don't look so well. When did you go to sleep? It seemed that my mom had noticed my sullen state. Yesterday, I kept on waking up in the middle of the night. Without a doubt, I felt a presence. I felt the presence of Sam someone standing in front of my door. I told myself repeatedly that it was my imagination and forced myself to try and sleep. Except not being able to stand it, I gathered up my courage and opened the door. Of course, there wasn't anyone there. I think I did this three times throughout the night. Or maybe I just didn't remember doing it any more than that. Even though I was able to get to breakfast, the breakfast table without incident, I still didn't feel at ease. It might be a cold. I don't really have an appetite. My, you do seem a little warm. Well, can you make it to school? Technically, I did go to a school, but it was mostly self-study. <laughs> it wouldn't matter how much if it wouldn't matter much if I missed a day, would it? I th oh, didn't Keiichi, like, never miss a day before or some shit, though? Didn't he say something like he had perfect attendance? It could have been that I hadn't been feeling well for the last few days because I really did have a cold. I'm pretty sure he said that somewhere. Correct me if I'm wrong. If I took some medicine and got a good day of rest, I might be able to greet everyone with a smile tomorrow. Startled, I looked back and forth between the entrance and the clock. It was ten minutes later than when I usually met up with Rena. It was Rena. Rena-chan came to get you. What are you going to do? Are you going to take the day off? Rena was a good girl. She might be somewhat quirky, but she was certainly cute. Lunches she made were delicious, and she always looked out for me. Why should I be so scared of something like that? It wasn't Rena's fault. It was probably mine. It had to have been my cold. It, it just had to be. I'll rest. Sorry. Then I'll go send her off for you. Mom headed off to the door. I'd have to pass by the entrance to get back to my room. <laughs> I didn't have the nerve to meet with her, so I wrapped myself in a blanket on the sofa and closed my eyes. I was so sleep deprived I quickly fell into a deep slumber. <laughs> Man. I had only intended to lie down for a bit, but it was almost noon when I woke up. I called out to my parents, but they didn't seem to be around. On the table, I found lunch prepared and a note. Mom and Dad apparently had driven off somewhere far away. Likely I had to do with Dad's work. This happened every so often, so it wasn't that unusual. They would be back for dinner, but might be a bit late. On the note, it said, The insurance card is in the cabinet. Take it and go to the hospital. There was also a well-drawn map to the hospital. That's right. I hadn't been there before, so I didn't exactly know where it was. I had a light lunch, although it was really just leftovers from the morning, and just in case, went to the hospital. Normally, I'd never be here in the middle of a weekday. Just walking around like this had me feeling guilty. It was an odd feeling. Following my mom's map, I took a road I usually never used. After walking for a bit, the hospital's sign came into view. Erie Clinic it was written rather stylishly on the sign. The clinic wasn't very big, but based on the scale of the rest of Hinamizawa, it was far too grand. 
There was a parking lot and even a reserved spot for buses. I must be making a mint. Aw, I like this gator. <laughs> I spaced out in the air-conditioned waiting room until it was my turn to be seen. My bar song, please make your way to the examination room. After half-heartedly answering all my chatty doctor's questions, he responded with the old, it's probably a cold. They gave me a shot and three days worth of medicine. I thought it was a little overboard, but if it would clear away the gloomy feeling I've, I'd been having lately, then it was worth it. Hmm. It's not going to show Yuri at all. I settled the bill and took a quick trip to the washroom. As I was leaving, I overheard a conversation between some elderly people who seemed to be regulars here. Of course, I had no intention of eavesdropping. If it just wasn't for that word. Must have been an Oni Kakushi. I wonder. She was still pretty young. Might have just eloped. With whom? With that man from Tokyo who visits every season. That young one with the big camera. Didn't she know they were getting along pretty well? Are they talking about Tomotake-san? Gee, I wonder. I could feel my ears perking up. I don't know about that. But... You have to make preparations before you elope. Leave a note or quit their job or something. It's an elopement because they didn't leave a note or message. The thought that I'll never see that young nurse's face again makes me rather sad. Takano-san is an upstanding young woman. She'll be fine wherever she goes. So her name was Takano-san. That woman with Tomotake-san. She worked at this clinic? I assure san the shadow was following me everywhere I went. I started listening more closely, but they began talking about fishing, and it didn't seem like they were going to revisit the topic. I gave up and left. Thus, even though I was separated from the daily monotony of school, I wasn't able to escape from Oyashiro-sama's shadow. But of course, Oyashiro-sama was the guardian deity of this place, of Hinamizawa. As long as I was in Hinamizawa, I wouldn't be able to escape. I mean... I guess... If you want to believe that j jargon, Keiichi, come on now. Maybe it was because I was walking outside, but my appetite had suddenly returned. Might as well buy a snack with the change from the examination fee on the way home. Contemplating that, I turned onto a familiar street. At that moment, I heard a car horn abruptly honk behind me. Was I really walking so far into the middle of the road where I'd be in a car's way? I moved farther off to the side, but the horn was still honking at me. I turned around, peeved. My bard son! Good day to you! It was Oishi son. He stepped out of his car as he on full blast and waved at me. What's up today? School on break? J just not feeling well, so I took the day off. I was about to buy lunch and head back home. That's great. I'm just about to get lunch myself. Would you mind going together? Uh, if you're not feeling up for it, then don't mind me. I was just going to lie down after going home anyway. I didn't really have a cold. I expect you'd rather avoid using one of the local places. Let's go to town. It's a bit of a drive. Is that alright? I know a pretty good place. I'd finally begun to understand Oishi-san's roundabout way of saying things. He probably wanted to talk to me about stuff that would be difficult to discuss while here in Hinamizawa. So fuck it, I just said yes. <laughs> I went with Oishi-san, riding in his frigid car. It was almost as if the bright sunlight outside was a lie. Sorry about calling you so late last night. Did your parents get angry at you? No. I called Rena, who had been listening to the phone conversation all that time, separated from me by just the door. Even now, in the brightness of the sunlight, the thoughts still creep me out. The big bump that jolted the car, the road... The big bump that jolted the car, the road connected to the city, 
The road connecting to the city changed from dirt to pavement. My head swiveled back with a sudden realization. That's right. This was where Tomotake-san died. They fit a snag on the investigation regarding Tomotake-san. Oishi-san spoke with spoke while peering at me from the corner of his eye. They believed it was caused by hallucinogens, given how he was clawing out his own throat. But a drug that could cause that to happen so suddenly is extremely hard to come by. Bear in mind, of course, the autopsy was done with that premise in mind, but we didn't find any leads. Why are you saying so much to Keiichi? He's like... He's just some, like, 16-year-old boy. Like, <laughs> I understand you're trying to get him to cooperate. I feel like you're saying way too much, though. Um, you know that thing you see in comics all the time? Where this drug that doesn't leave any traces after being consumed? It exists. Suck in, suck in alcohol, something or other. What the fuck? How do you say that? Such an alcohol? Suck it? Suck in alcohol? Suck. Suck. Suck in alcohol. Well, it's pretty common. But you see, that doesn't seem to be any kind of drug that would cause Tomotake san to act like that. Then, you're saying the police concluded Tomotake san just died from the curse? I couldn't help but feel that the police were worthless. I just wanted the idea of a curse to be dis, uh, dissociated from Tomotake-san's mysterious death. Unfortunately, that's how it looks right now. But putting aside the cause of death, without a doubt he was surrounded by a group of people and had taken a beating before he died. That was no curse, but an incident that unquestionably involved other humans. That made me a bit relieved. passed in front of a rather desolate but still busier than Hinamizawa train station. The car pulled into a restaurant parking lot and I followed Oishi-san into the shop. It's pretty crowded, but there were only adults at this hour. Of course there wouldn't be children in, children in here in the middle of a weekday. Two, please. I'll make do with non-smoking. This way, please. When you're ready to order, please call me over. We were led by a peculiar addressed waitress to our table. I sat with Oishi-san in the booth. Wait, is this the place I think it is? <laughs> so what do you think? Aren't the waitress's outfits here cute? Huh? Well, um, I guess? The shop is always quite busy. It's more about the waitresses than the food, you see. Uh-huh. Oishi-san, you're leering. Hmm? Am I really? <laughs> this totally is the place I think it is. <laughs> this place comes up if more than more than a few times. Regardless of how the waitress is like, the food is decent enough. Finishing our meals while talking about some, insane, some inane topic, Oishi-san's after-meal cup of coffee arrived at the table. Yesterday we talked about Hinamizawa's past, didn't we? Yeah, that it was the village of man-eating demons or some shit like that. I didn't know much about it myself, so I asked my grandmother about it this morning. Oishi-san took out the notepad that was stuffed into his breast pocket. Turns out that Hinamizawa used to be called Onigafuji. Or Oga's Abyss. Onigafuji? That's quite the name. The name is still around. The marsh where the Shinto priest's wife drowned herself is still called Oga's Abyss. It's said that the depths of that marsh connected the, to the realm of demons. Nailed it, Dylan. Of, of course, nobody had told me anything about such an ominous marsh. And you see, it appears they were both feared and revered. A respect born of fear. I guess you could say that it was some kind of deification. A village of inhuman creatures. Seems the demons were senin, or mountain-dwelling mystics of sorts. Villages with incurable illnesses would be taken to Oga's Abyss to be healed, for example. Even if we're calling them demons, Tengu, long-nosed goblins, or senin would be a far more apt description. They don't seem like such terrible people. 
even though they were called demons. But they were still man-eating demons. According to the story my grandma told me, it's payment for treating the son's illness. <clears throat> Let us eat the mother who brought him here, was apparently how things went. The price of curing her son was herself? That's unsettling. Of course, the mother took her son and ran. Then, you see, all the villagers of Onikafuchi, the demons chased her and captured them. The entire village, apparently. That's quite a frightening thing to imagine. Reminds me of when the entire student body chased Rena into the shed. <laughs> In the end, it seems both the mother and the son were caught and eaten. The end. There's a problem with this story. Both witnesses in this story were eaten, so nobody would be able to tell the tale. Huh? <laughs> there are plenty of old fables like that. In contrast to the ghastly tale, Oishi son laughed heartily while sipping his coffee. But well... There are quite a few other tales, where the demons from Onigafuchi band together to capture their prey. I recalled that Mion said the villagers united and fought against the dam construction. I wouldn't call that the same thing. Hmm. I saw similarities with how that part about unification overlapped. They would always hunt down a single person, and they chose who it was going to be beforehand. Huh? That caught my attention. Oishi-san also appeared to be pondering what it meant. My grandmother told me that you must never interfere with the demon's hunt. You should just hole up in your house and hide under the covers, she said. So what does this all mean? It means you mustn't ever help or protect the prey. As long as you don't disturb the demon's hunt, no harm will fall upon the villagers. It seems that there's that kind of rule. Basically, don't help the victims. Pretend you didn't see the atrocities. In other words... What happens if you break the rule? Angel Mort. Yeah, that's the name of the place. <laughs> well... The man-eating demons, after all. Many parts of that tale caught my attention. Parts of the story he told me overlapped with this theory that the entire village was sin on the crime. Even if it was, wasn't the whole village, it was conceivable that the villagers were hiding under the covers and leaving them to die. And there's a group that was on their hunt, wasn't it? I didn't dare speak it. Then, Oishi-san, I guess it looks like it's either the entire village or a group of villagers perpetrating the crimes. What do you think, bar son Ah, excuse me. Another cup of coffee, please. That's what I wanted to know. It seemed that we were both waiting for the other to say that, that last part. We waited for the waitress to finish pouring coffee before speaking. Last year I had a nagging feeling when Sato Shikun disappeared. Oishi-san muttered as he watched the milk swirl around in his coffee. So those friends of Sato Shikun, meaning your group of friends, I had a bit, really just a little bit, okay, of background checking done on them. If Oishi-san had said this to me before, I would have gotten angry at him for calling my friends in question. But as I was now, I couldn't. This might sound pretty stupid, my bar son. If you feel that it's stupid, please say so. I'll just stop. Oishi-san was wearing the most serious expression that I'd ever seen from him. It was as if he was telling me to prepare myself and listen. There were quite a few things I regretted hearing from him, but none of them were as threatening as this. A little voice inside me was screaming like an alarm. Stop, Keiichi. This is probably the last one. I took a deep breath and silenced that voice. I would not run from the truth. Please. That was all I could utter. Wishasan stared into my eyes silently for a few moments. After I was certain I was ready, he began. The victim of the incident in the first year was the Overseer. A few weeks prior, he had an altercation with Mion Sonazaki. Multiple altercations. Wishasan had said before that Mion had defied the dam project vehemently. Well, it wasn't hard to imagine how she'd be if she got worked up. In the second year, the married couple who supported the project died in that accident, right? Their daughter was with them at the time. Her name is Satoko Hojo-san. Huh? Satoko? Meaning, Satoko? Oishi-san's look told me that my voice was too loud. Oh, sorry. 
Santico! There we go. I realized it was as well and quickly quieted down. The Shinto priest and his wife who died the third year, you see. Their daughter, daughter is Rika Furude's son. Rika-chan was the housewife who died in the fourth year. You know already, don't you? He was the step-aunt of Satoko Hojo-san. She was in her aunt and uncle's custody, and she had lost both of her parents in the accident. She lived in the victim's house. She lived in the victim's house. I could tell my lips were getting dry. I didn't even have the wits to keep my mouth from hanging gape. I thought it was nothing but a bizarre incident, one that I could easily distance myself from, but clicking and clacking it had snuck all the way to my feet. The one who disappeared the fourth year, by the way. He was Satoko san's older brother. What just uh wait, just a second. It took everything I had to finally say that. I gulped down a glass of water and once again wet my face with a napkin. Calm down, Keiji. Ruishi san was relentless. Instead of waiting for me to finish sorting out my feelings to start speaking again. The last of the things I shouldn't have heard. All of the victims seem to be connected to your group of friends. That has to be just a coincidence. My bar son, keep it down. Oh, sorry. That has to be just a coincidence! That has to be such a coincidence! There we go. I think that's more appropriate. Everyone's looking. Neon, Satoko, Rika-chan. So what if they're connected? You're telling me all my friends? Couldn't be, it just couldn't be. Oh, Rena's different, isn't she? Rena isn't connected with the victims at all. Rena Ryugu was living in a suburb of Ibaraki Prefecture up until last year. It's true she hadn't directly met any of the victims. Said it in a roundabout way. Is he saying she's also connected? Actually, I looked into her. Before Ryugu-san moved away to Inuizawa, she was suspended from school. It seems she went through her school building and broke out all the windows. Rena did that? She broke all the windows at her school? The same spacey Rena had done that? I couldn't even imagine it. Oh my god. The high pitch of that. I had, to, I had to turn my headphones down. Damn. It seems that after her three-day suspension, she didn't return to school. She went out. She went to a neurologist and was diagnosed with dysauto... What the fuck? Dysautonomia. Dysautonomia. She went to a neurologist and was diagnosed with dysautonomia. She was given weeks of counseling and medication. Man, if I busted out all the windows in my school, it would be more than three weeks suspension. I'll tell you that. It would have been expulsion. I wonder if it was something like a nervous break. Oh, well, I wonder if it was something like a nervous breakdown. I heard that it happens to people who are really methodical or overly sensitive. Neither of those matched Renna's easygoing personality. And in the counselor's medical report, he recorded all the conversations he had with Renna. It shows up. And quite a bit at that. What did? Press forward carelessly. There couldn't be anything more for me to regret. She mentioned the word Oyashiro-sama. It felt like someone's stone-cold hand was caressing my back. Why? Why had Rena spoken of Oyashiro-sama before she even came to Hinamizawa? Seems that Oyashiro-sama she spoke of was like a ghost, appearing in her house every night. Standing over a pillow, looking down at her. My mind froze. I couldn't process what I was being told. A while after that, she moved to Inumizawa. Ah, that's right. She's not an outsider. Huh? According to the re residency register, the Ryuga family used to live there. They moved to Ibaraki just as Renaissance entered elementary school. My mind went completely blank. It was similar to the static you'd see on a blank TV channel. My ears began ringing as I lost all sense of comprehension. My bar, son, are you all right? Sh should we? Should we stop? 
Those words brought me back. I couldn't let it end here. Now I know about Rena. Then, about how about the last victim, Tomitake-san? Who is he connected with? Here it's it. Did I let, let out one final reprisal? All of them. Have you forgotten my bar, son? Didn't you all spend the night of the festival together quite merrily? Quite a few of the officers saw you enjoying yourselves. Now there was nothing I could respond with. I feel silent as my brain turned to mush. We should get going. Ah, my bar, son, did you take the, your afternoon medicine? I had completely forgotten about the medicine I had gotten today until he said that. Got another glass of water, and we left the shop after I chugged it down. We got in the car and returned to Hinamisawa via the rough road. I never really paid attention when I was on my bike, but cars... But did cars normally shake this much? It was almost as if the road was desperately trying to tell me something. But um. That big jolt was from the difference in elevation of the road when it changed from cement to dirt. I was certain that I heard Tomitake-san scream. Sign silence just letting myself be shaken by the car. I'll drop you off at your house. You missed school because you were ill, correct? My apologies for the long conversation. Why did you talk to me? I blurted out the question. Really, just blurted it out. I didn't expect an answer. I did check with you first, didn't I? We should just stop. No, not that. Why did you reach out to me at all? I understood quite well that Oishi-san was investigating this string of suspicious incidents. But why is he telling me all of this? I knew some I knew nothing and I couldn't help. Everything Oishi-san spoke of was news to me. First of all, what could I, having just moved here, possibly know? By chance, if there was a reason for Oishi-san to reach out to me, then it would have to be that I was part of Mion's circle of friends who looked suspicious to him. I'm retiring this year. I plan on moving away after retiring as my grandma wants. So while I'm still on the case, I want to bring the truth behind this incident to light. So, Oishi-san, you suspect them, don't you? All of them. Oishi-san didn't really give it a, a response. It felt a little late, but I thought it was his way of showing a bit of consideration for my feelings. This is most. <clears throat> Ow! This is mostly my intuition from 30 years on this job. My bar son, you're the one in danger. Huh? I wanted to reply with, "That's absurd," but my downtrodden in my downtrodden state, I couldn't bring myself to say it. I'll be retiring this year, so I won't be at the Watanagashi next year. So I want to settle things. In other words, he was insinuating that on the next Watanagashi, I might be the victim. I've been warned by the chief as well. Each incident in the string of cases, cases has been solved, so don't bring it up again. So I was told. This is the pressure that I'm facing. Pressure? From what? Someone in Hinemizawa. You've arrived. Is this fine? After some time, the car finally reached the path to my house. The clock read 2 p.m. I was surprised a little time had passed since we ate. It was hot outside the car. The chirping of the Igarashi hurt my ears. I won't mind if you just forgot everything I told you today. But I'm still going to keep investigating. I'll end up- I'll end Oyashiro Sama's curse this year. So you're saying I should contact you if anything happens? It's fine. Just contact me when you feel you have to, Maibara. I wasn't collected enough to understand Oishi-san's roundabout way of saying it. Be sure to take it easy. I'm sorry for throwing all this at you while you're taking the day off because you're sick. I didn't really give any sort of response. I'll always be on your side. If anything, at least believe that. I'll be off now. The tires crunched over the dirt road as the car made a U-turn and disappeared into a cloud of kicked up dust. I felt like I was watching a boat only throw me a lifesaver in a shark infested waters before disappearing into the distance. That was the first time I thought Oishi-san was being unfair. 
telling me I was going to be the next victim than just saying to contact him if something happened. This wasn't a criminal investigation. He was fishing. And that was just the bait dangling off the line. Would the fish be the perpetrator? Or was it really just the Yashiro Sama's curse? Either way, the bait would be swallowed whole. Damn it. I don't want to die. For some time, I could do nothing but stare at the puddle of water left by the AC from the car. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> oh, she saw it such a dick. That's actually totally true. <laughs> It's like, Oishi saw it's being unfair, and in my head I was like, is he? And the way he explained it, I was like, wow, I guess he is. Oishi san's like fast talking strategy actually got me. <laughs> oh. That's that's kind of funny. I guess that's gonna have to be it for this episode. Next time we're gonna see what happens tonight, I guess. The aftermath, we'll see if Keishi's parents come home, we'll see what happens. Um, I think I remember exactly what happens. So next episode's going to be pretty interesting, if I'm remembering correctly. I'm not gonna, I'm going to try not to spoil anything, so I guess I will just see you guys then. Have a beautiful rest of your night. I hope you've enjoyed the series thus far, and are hyped for the next one. Uh, I'll see you then, and goodbye. Mwah.